Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and kind of explain the differences between, I guess you could say like, self-casting and PoE and playing around with like traps and mines uh, and even totems because a lot of people always ask, what's the difference between traps and mines? You know, what's the difference between going uh, spell totem and self-cast? And pretty much the only answer most people give is, well, by going totems, traps, and mines, you avoid reflect damage. But there's a lot more than just that. But before we get into that part of it, I want to show you guys the actual differences within the skill gems themselves. So, first off, let's talk about traps. That's, that's what I played for the longest time. So, when you put a skill on a trap, so this is any skill that's not an actual trap. Actual traps would be things like lightning trap, ice trap, bear trap, fire trap. These have set cooldowns. These cooldowns vary depending on the type of trap. So Lightning Trap, for example, has the shortest of the cooldowns tied with Ice Trap at 2 second cooldown. Now, everything, every trap has the same cast time, uh, every trap has the same um, usage charge, they all have 3 charges. So Lightning Trap and Ice Trap have 2 second cooldowns. Fire Trap and Bear Trap both have 3 second cooldowns. And any skill supported by the trap support gem has a 4 second cooldown. So. This kind of sucks in the current clear speed meta because by going um, by going sab and getting like chain reaction, you can get 40% cooldown recovery. You can also grab like hasty recover. Well, actually, you need to grab hasty reconstruction, and then you still typically need to use two different types of traps. One for kind of like alternating for packs, unless you're doing it with lightning trap or ice trap. Uh, because their cooldown is already so short. The only problem is, is Ice Trap got hit with a huge AoE nerf, so that's kind of out there for a single target, unless you want to, I mean, single target it's okay, but unless you want to do like some gimmicky stuff, it just doesn't really feel as consistent. Uh, Lightning Trap I know works really well, like Elemental is prolif and stuff, um, but that's really the only use I've seen out of it. So, there's also some other support gems you can use, like Cluster Trap. Cluster Trap is unique to traps, which basically, you can have up to five additional traps placed, and the reason why is because instead of throwing one trap, you throw four, because you get three additional. So this adds a really nice AoE uh, clear, except the problem is, is they just nerfed the AoE scaling of like 95% of most spells, so this kind of took a huge hit to the face as well. Um, the proper ways of utilizing this is going like Sunblast plus two cheap constructions, uh, I would have brought them in, but I didn't think about that. And basically what that does is it just essentially gives you instant detonation. So you throw your traps, uh, they arm, and then they just explode. And they're kind of kind of similar to mines. The last thing in here is the trap cooldown support gem. This should not really be used in like any build. Maybe there are some really niche things. The problem is, is this is a basically reduces the cooldown of your spell. But, I mean, if you're playing a trap, you should be, like, one-shotting pretty much everything. Um, and if you're running into cooldowns, you should really just maybe use, like, a two-handed weapon so you can use two different six-links. A six-link chest piece and a six-link in your weapon, and that way you can have two different six-link traps. Um, and then the one that's shared between traps and mines, which would be a trap and mine support gem, uh, which gives a multiplier to your trap and mine damage. However, it has reduced trap laying and throwing speed. Um, now... One of the other differences between these is that you do not take any reflect damage, and the reason why is when you're using a trap or a mine, they look very similar, so this would be a mine. Mine you place on the floor, and a trap, you would basically just lob it and throw it. So if I just put in like a trap gem here, and remove like remote mine, you'll see a trap would be thrown into the darkness uh, that you can see. But you can see it also has a cooldown if you look at it, whereas mines do not have any cooldown. So if I were to just put this in and remove the trap, you can see I can just continuously place them on the floor. It doesn't stop. The other thing is you no longer use cast speed. Cast speed is irrelevant. It doesn't do anything. You can't use faster casting. You can't use echo. This applies for totems, except you can, you can use faster casting for spell totem. You cannot use echo for spell totem. Echo is unique and is only for self-cast. And what Echo is, is it's essentially a multi-strike for spells, um, which allows you to cast two times. Is it two times? Yeah, two times instead of one. And you can see Echo right here. This is what Echo does. So, let's go ahead and go into mines now. Mines are really kind of clunky a lot of the time, which is why a lot of people played traps in the past. However, with a bunch of the nerfs and everything kind of upcoming, um, the meta has shifted a little bit more towards projectiles, and I feel that mines favor projectiles over traps. And the reason why is because projectiles kind of auto-target monsters, 
whereas AOEs you need a target to go off. So let's use an example. If I were to use a mine such as Fire Nova Mine, I'm going to put Fire Nova Mine in instead of Arc. So where's Arc? Okay, I now put in Fire Nova Mine and I'll detonate. And you'll see Fire Nova Mine will detonate with its AoE. The problem is I could also put an Arc instead and I could put an Arc down here and detonate it and it'll shock and chain to a target over here, which will then chain all the way into here, which could potentially even go into this dark room over here. And that kind of pushes me into that because like every skill can favor a different type of way. Like it, it really depends on how creative you are and, and what you want to do with it. So like some really good uh, gems to support on mines would be like Frostbolt. Uh, Frostbolt kind of just like shoots out and will just continuously go. Arc is the exact same thing. Although Frostbolt doesn't need a target and Arc does need a target. Um, and the support gems you can use for this would be like Minefield, which is very similar to Cluster Trap, where you basically place a couple a couple um, tr mines on the floor instead of just placing one, uh, and that's really nice because it adds basically for clear speed. So the purpose of Minefield and Cluster Trap is the goal when you're playing these types of builds is to just set one cluster down and you can kill the trap or sorry the pack. So you would use Cluster Trap, throw you know five fire traps, and that would clear the whole pack, and then you move to the next pack. Same thing with self-cast. If you play a self-cast build, your goal is to hit the pack one time or two times and move on to the next pack. Anything else, it just gets kind of clunky. Rares are you know, different and bosses are the same thing. Um, and then again, they share the trap and mine support gem. Now, one other thing to note is with remote mine and trap itself, these actually have a multiplier on them. So it's not like you're just sacrificing the skill to put it on. For example, trap support, or actually let's look at mine support. My mine, remote mine support, supported skills deal 50% more mine damage. That's pretty, that's a 50%, that's a huge multiplier. Um, so you do get other additional multipliers while using things like this, which is pretty cool. So as for totems, totems are definitely different than traps um, and mines because of the way they're played. When you were to play something on a totem, instead of essentially, um, how should I say, Instead of like bursting down the packs, totems offer, it's just a different play style really. Instead of running in melee like a mine would, you know, you put a mine in and boom or something, totems you can cast literally safely from a distance, and then the totem will then scale off of your stats and use the associated skills. So totems are very good for things like bosses, because totems, um, totems are very, usually mana efficient. It's usually quite easy to sustain the mana on a totem opposed to doing self-cast or something because all you need to do is summon the totem one or two times and it will just continuously attack for you without consuming your mana. Mine specifically have retarded amounts of mana cost because you essentially will scale mine laying speed, which is kind of like casting speed because the faster you lay down the mine, the faster you can then detonate it, which is the faster that you know overall your cycle of triggering and using your skill works. Uh, and by doing that, you constantly hit these these huge meta barriers. So you'd use things like uh, Vault Clarity or just scale a bunch of mana regeneration like I've done personally on my character. Other things like Corrupted Blood, a lot of on-hit effects are completely bypassed because of the fact that you're using traps and mines uh, and totems. However, you can still proc things like Elemental Equilibrium, so you can't really abuse that. If you use Elemental Equilibrium, when you place down a trap or mine or totem, it'll still proc this. But again, like I said, you may have to do a little bit of research if you want to find something niche or gimmicky that kind of works for you. Overall, mines and traps both alike are very good for league starters. And the reason why is you can scale your damage as much as you want and you don't ever have to worry about reflect. A lot of builds at the start of a league require like a heavy unique or a plus two or plus three gems weapon um, or you know they just need a bunch of stuff to get going. Traps and mines don't need that. They'll be very squishy, don't get me wrong but you can still clear everything immediately. And that's very, very important at the start of the league because being one of the first to get into high tier maps or being one of the first to get into bosses or whatever it is that you wanna do, um, that really gives you a huge edge over other players just because you're going so much faster. And again, you can play whatever you want. This is just my play style. So this is kind of why I know a little bit about it. Anyway, that's pretty much uh, going to be it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. But before I end this video, I just want to talk about a few other things. Um, remember that on your tree, there are different nodes for everything that you do. So mines are going to have different nodes than traps, right? You can see the mine nodes are highlighted here. Um, traps are going to have 
different nodes as well. Traps actually can extend all the way down here to Master Sapper. And totems will have different nodes as well. You can see totems, for example, would have uh, Shamanistic Fury, Shaman's Dominion, Ancestral Bond, uh, Totemic Mastery, Totemic Zeal, Ironwood, etc. Mines get Blast Cascade. Blast Cascade has basically pretty okay, pretty fair um, power charge generation, which is really nice. Traps can get Frenzy Charges via Master Sapper, and um, Totems get Shamanistic, or Shaman's Dominion, and then they get like 40 crit multi on the way, and then you get another 20 crit multi with 100 global crit chance. One last thing to note when, when doing things like Shaman's Dominion, well, when playing things with Totems, um, and traps as well is you cannot easily proc elemental overload so you would have to I mean you can easily proc you just have to use a second skill you'd have to use like an orb of storms or whatever it is that you want to do uh, which is pretty standard because you would usually do stuff like that for like a curse on hit setup um, so just pair them both together and spell totem really relies heavily on totem summoning speed if you don't have totem summoning speed your build is going to feel really shit because that's basically the, the time it takes for you to, to cast your totem and your totem to summon. And you're going to be doing that all throughout the whole map. That's basically like cast speed, except cast speed is how fast the totem casts, not how fast it summons, unless they changed it and swapped around that. They kept, they kept messing around with how nodes work, so I do apologize. I don't mean to give any misinformation, but there is specifically a stat called uh, totem placement speed that I'd highly recommend you investing into if you're playing a totem build. Whether you pick up totemic mastery, totemic zeal, uh, ironwood, etc. I would get at least one of the clusters. Now that's pretty much going to be it this time around uh, for the video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed yourself. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, and the last thing to add in is that remember when you're playing a trap slash mine slash totem build, you cannot use leech mechanics. Leech does not work. Um, you would have to use something like, well, with self-cast, you'd be going like Volpact and Ghost Reaver, but then you have to fight against Reflect or just Volpact if you're playing a life-based character. Um, with traps, mines, totems, etc., you would do things like scale, maybe skill effect duration, uh, go Zealot's Oath, maybe you go low life for additional auras. Um, you kind of have to be a little more creative sometimes. But like I said, hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.